Hi guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you the right way to use Grasshopper's image sampler. Let's get started. Hi guys, I'm Azhar. Welcome back to another tutorial. This time I'm going to talk about the image sampler. So I see a lot of videos out there which use image sampler as something for beginners, but really it's more of like an intermediate technique that, I mean, that's how I feel. And, you know, I see a lot of people using it incorrectly. So hopefully this is the only video you will need to know how to use the image sampler properly. If this is your first time here and you want to learn Rhino and Grasshopper, make sure you subscribe and also use the link below to, you know, download all the tutorial files so you can follow along with us. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So to begin, let's just have a look at our problem right here. So I have a six foot wide by 12 foot tall wall over here and I wanna do something interesting on this wall using an image, like a JPEG image I found online. And the best way to do that is using the image sampler. But before we can do anything on this wall, Okay, let's just understand what the image sampler is and how it works. So in Grasshopper over here, go ahead, double click and just type in image sampler. It'll open up this box and you'll see that it's a component that has one input, one output, and right now it has a big exclamation point in the middle. So just go ahead, double click that and you'll see that it opens up this window. This is where you actually set the parameters for your image, the graphic that you want to use. So under file path, go ahead, click that ellipsis and select an image that you want to use. I'm using an awesome movie, Rush R2. I'm using their poster. Okay, Jackie Chan, Chris Tucker. Let's have a look at how to use this. What do you see over here? When you see that image come in, you'll see that there's an X domain, zero to one, and a Y domain that goes zero to one. Okay, now I don't recommend using these default settings. Okay, you always wanna use, especially with image sampler, uh, the X and Y relative to the image. I mean, this is not a square image, so you definitely don't wanna go zero to one, zero to one, right? This is a rectangular poster. So let's just use the pixels off the JPEG to determine the domain. And the way you wanna do that is come over here on the right-hand side and click this little icon over here. And you'll see that now this changes one to 1806 and one to 2800, okay? Now you do wanna remember those numbers. So I'm gonna write down 1806 and 2800 separately. So I'll just click okay, open up a panel, 1806, another panel, 2800. Okay, just save those over here and you'll notice that now the image sampler actually shows the graphic that you wanna see. Okay, so what is this and what needs to go in and what comes out? To, in order to test that, I want you guys to just make a point, P-O-I-N-T, right click, set one point, and just make sure in Rhino that the type equals coordinate. Okay, this way you can actually place a point and move it around in Grasshopper. What I want you to do is place a point near the origin, okay, near the X, Y axis right here at the origin and plug that into the image sampler. Let's see what comes out. On the other side, what comes out is these numbers. Now, you'll notice that, you know, these are actually RGB numbers, right? These are, this is a color, RGB, okay? In fact, I can color this point with this data right here by using custom preview, custom preview, okay? The geometry is this point, and the material is the output of the image sampler, and you'll see that the point changes color, okay? In fact, if I move the point around by just clicking on the point component, and then dragging the point, you'll see that it changes color as I'm dragging it around. Like I'll drag it somewhere else. Now it's uh, this, actually I can hide that. No, I need it on to move it. So yeah, it's this red color now. If I move it here, it's uh, some dark black color. So you can see that as I'm moving this around, it's picking up a color from the poster. So how do I know exactly where it's picking it up? Well, what you wanna do is draw this image in Rhino but use these coordinates. So 1806 and 2800, let me draw a rectangle. So I'll click the rectangle tool. It asks for the first corner of the rectangle, which is the origin, so zero, enter. Okay, then asking for the length, which is 1806. Then the height is 2800. And this thing is gigantic. I mean, this is my little 12 foot wall here. And this is the rectangle I'm drawing, right? This is several like football fields, several, probably several city blocks maybe, you know? This is huge, right? 3,000 feet almost. So this is actually our graphic. And if I move the point around, 
you'll see that I pick up different colors. So maybe if I go right over here, it should pick up a white color. Yes, it does. If I move a little bit lower, maybe it'll pick out the red from the title. Uh, yes, it does. You see here, it may pick out the black from the suit somewhere over here, perhaps. Yep, it does. So wouldn't it be great instead of using one point and dragging it around, let's put like a thousand points there and see what happens. Now, the easiest way to populate a rectangle like this is if you have already downloaded the paneling tools component. And if you haven't, sorry, the plugin paneling tools, if you haven't downloaded this already, I highly recommend you do that. But uh, over here, there's actually a component which is surface domain number you can use or surface domain length. Both of them will work really well on this rectangle. If you haven't downloaded it, that's okay. You can still follow along. I'll show you how to do it using just generic grasshopper components. The one I'm going to use is this one called square, just the square grid. Okay, and what it asks for is the plane size and how many grid cells do you want. So first I'll start with the size and this is pretty big. So let me start with, I don't know, 50 feet and see what that is. Okay, 50, put that in here, call this cell size. Okay, so 50 and you can see that it's created a grid over here. And if I, of course, increase or decrease this, that changes. But the extent, which is five and five right now, which is why it's creating a five by five grid. This is what determines like how big or how many like cells you actually have, right? Um, in this case, it's pretty easy to determine how many cells I need because I have the lengths over here. So for example, this is the X, this is the Y. And so what I can do is take the X and divide it by 87, and that will give me some number here, 20, and that's how many I need in the X direction. And you can see that's how many cells I get. It's a little bit over, I think that's okay. I'm not too concerned about that. Um, let's do the exact same thing, but for the Y direction. So copy and paste, bring the Y over here, and this time it's Y divided by the size, which gives us 32 or so, and that there we go. Now that covers the entire rectangle. And of course, this maintains itself even if I change this back down to 50 or even go down to 30. I mean, you know, so that's great. It's working and I'm pretty much covering the rectangle. If you want to be exact, I recommend using paneling tools, but for now, this will do just fine. Okay. So now that we have these, notice that one of the outputs here is points. Even though it looks like a bunch of curves right now, there's actually an output called points. So instead of sending one point, I'm going to delete this single point here. So instead of sending one point, let's send it all of these points. How many do I have? I have 2,100 points. Let's see what this gives us. Okay, so 2,100 points go in, which means I get 2,100 colors. So let's apply those colors using custom preview to these points and let's see what happens. Okay, something's happening here, but it's a little bit hard to see because this component is still on. So let's turn that off using control Q. Okay, and turn some of this off, even though it doesn't matter there. And you can see that the image starts to show itself, right? So even though my little wall here is, is all, so tiny compared to this image, that's okay. I'm not really concerned about that right now. Okay, so, and you can probably guess, like if I decrease the size, this image will get more and more accurate, right? So if I decrease it to 30, Wow, look at that, a lot better. If I go down to 10, if I go down to 10, I mean, now you're seeing facial features. Uh, you know, how many points is this? Let's see, this is 51,000 points. That's a lot of points. Uh, probably you're not gonna use these many points and you're probably not gonna do this operation necessarily, which is just recreate the image in Rhino. That's really not why we're doing this, right? In fact, all of these are points. If I really zoom in, you'll see that they are all actually just points coming together. So what do we do from here? What we really want to do is use this data to create geometry or to adjust or manipulate geometry. That's really what we wanna use it for. Okay, so right now we're getting color data, which is only doing so much, right? Uh, so instead of color data, let's see what other kinds of data we can get. So go ahead and double click this image sampler again. And in here, you'll see that this first little icon has been selected, which is the RGB colors. There's also just the red channel, just the green channel, just the blue channel. Let's click on one of those. Let's say the red channel, for example, click OK. And you'll see, oh, well, actually, I probably should change this down to something larger. Let's say 50, just so it runs a little bit faster. And you'll see that wherever the red values are, 
uh, you know, how strong they are in the image, that's the number it's going to spit out. So let's see. You'll see now that the numbers have changed. Before, they were like 200-something, right, going between 0 and 255. Now they're actually going between 0 and 1. Okay, so that's the main difference is that, for example, here, 0, 0, 0. You see those? They go from 0 to a maximum of 1, and you may see a 1 over there as well. Here you see some. So that's the bounds, the minimum and maximum. So what can we do with this? You want to be able to use these numbers then to create or adjust geometry. Double click this again, I'll show you some other options here. So you can also choose some of the other channels like green and blue. You can choose the, the hue, the saturation. I'm going to stick with this one called brightness at the end and click OK. So it basically just turns it into like a black and white image and just measures how bright each pixel, so to speak, is on that image. So here, notice again, like this component isn't working because I'm no longer giving it a color. So let's just delete it and get rid of it for now. Let's see how we can use this information. So let's see, for example, what if I drew a circle, right, at each of these points, except the radius came from here. Let's see what that looks like. And you can barely see it, right? If I go in my top view here, you can barely see an image coming together. So in this case, what you want to do is recognize that anytime you have data like this, where it's going between zero and one, or it could be any other kind of domain, the, and you want to translate that data into another set of numbers, the best thing you can do is use remap. Remap numbers. Okay, remap numbers is extremely useful because I can take these numbers that are coming out of the image sampler as the values. There's a source domain already in here that goes from 0 to 1, and now I can change it to another target. So for example, if I drop this component, which is construct domain, I drop this in here, I can actually create, uh, let's say something goes from 12 to 50. I have no idea if this will work. Okay, let's just try these numbers out. And now instead of a zero, it will become a 12. Instead of being a one, it will be a 50. So you see, you're just kind of taking all the data and just stretching it or squeezing it into another set of minimum and maximum values. So anything that was closer to a zero will be closer to 12. Anything that was closer to a one will now be a 50. Let's see what that looks like. Take those mapped coordinates now, those map values, and place them into the radius. And you see a lot better. Now we can actually see some difference in there. Now, if you don't like the circles overlapping, we can adjust some of these values. So let's say this 12 can become a zero, and this 50 becomes a 15 maybe, okay? And you can start to see that where the image was the brightest, that's where the circles are the largest. And where the image is the darkest, like where there's, uh, you know, where their clothing is, you can see that that's where it's the lightest. So you can also invert that relationship. That's the great thing about using remap is, you know, the lower one, which was zero, I want that to be something like 20. And the higher values, maybe that's down to one. You know, and now you get the inverse relationship. So this is really great because you can start playing with these values and really start adjusting that relationship using this. Now, okay, so we've created some geometry. We've used the image sampler to adjust the radius of these circles, but this is on a gigantic plane right now. I want it on here on my project. And this is what always happens, that people start to think that they need to use image sampler here on their project. No, always start off with image sampler like this and then use something like a rectangle map. So rectangle mapping, okay, ask for three things. Ask for geometry, a source rectangle, and a target rectangle. Let me show you how this works. So the geometry we want to place on our project over here is the circles, for example. Place the circles under geometry. It needs a source rectangle. Like it needs a rectangle that basically contains all of this geometry. And we have one. It's actually right here. So go ahead double click and just use a curve. Curve input over here, right click, set one curve. We'll use this curve. Actually, I can name this as my mega rectangle, you know? Okay, put that in here under the source. And now I need a target rectangle. And it just so happens that here, I've also drawn an extra curve that is the bounding that front of this wall. So curve, right click, let's call this project rectangle. Okay, set one curve and make sure we display that correctly under the target. And there you go, it translates it over. Now, don't worry so much if uh, you guys try it and it doesn't look the same. Okay, for some people, 
what may happen is depending on how grasshopper is reading the rectangle, it may be something that's along the side. It may accidentally be mirrored, you know, where it's reading the other way around. That's perfectly normal. Okay, all it means is you gotta either just flip your rectangle or rotate it around or something. Basically, you just wanna adjust your rectangle so that the bottom corner here matches the bottom corner here. And there's really no way to do that. So just just test it out and, and manipulate the rectangle as needed. That's my best piece of advice. But the greatest thing about this is that now this rectangle, I can do anything else. So in my project, for example, um, if we decided in the project, hey, let's make that twice as big. I don't have to touch Grasshopper at all. You know, I can just work directly in Rhino now. You see, I can make that twice as big. Oh, it needs to move to another wall somewhere else. Nope, just drag it, move it somewhere else, okay? It needs to uh, be rotated and placed on another wall over here. Yep, just rotate it, place it somewhere else on another wall. You know, once you set this up in Grasshopper, it becomes really easy to start adjusting that geometry in your project. That's why I'd, I recommend always starting with the original image at its original scale and then using rectangle mapping to place it somewhere. So this works really well, for example, if you're doing like perforation or something, right? But say you want actual three-dimensional geometry. So instead of this circle, let's try one more thing, where instead of the circle, let's make a box. Okay, uh, and let's use center box. So we use center box. Um, again, let's see, the base of the box is the points. That's where the center of the box should be. And then its X, Y, Z dimensions should come from the mapped value. So let's try that, X, Y, Z. Uh, let's see what that looks like over here. Oh, that's really awesome. Look at that, right? It's almost like we get this three-dimensional field of cubes, almost looking like some Minecraft kind of game now where we start to see the image emerge, right? Um, not only that, I actually want to color these too. So uh, let's, let's try this custom preview. Okay, uh, custom preview. The geometry is the box and the material is the color, but oh, guess what's coming out here? The brightness values. So it's not the color. So in this case, it's easy fix. Just control C, control V, copy and paste the image sampler. And in the one that you copied, just put it back to RGB. Okay, so you're getting the color value out again. And just go ahead and paste the colors in here. And now it's following the colors of the poster, but the size of the cube comes from the brightness values. That's pretty awesome, right? Now, uh, as I said earlier, let's just map this onto our project, which is our tiny little wall over here. Let's see what happens when I do that. So go ahead, take the box, map the boxes over, and this is what happens. Okay, first of all, they're all red. Let's change the colors up. So I'm gonna replace the geometry from the original box to the mapped box, okay? I mean, it looks really cool, okay? Don't get me wrong. Uh, and it's the correct information, except the X and Y of the box got translated well, but not the Z value, okay? So this is my recommendation, is that you guys gotta figure out which way works best for your project, okay? In most cases, doing the mapping at the end will work just fine. But sometimes, like in this one, you wanna do the mapping first. So let me show you what I mean by that. Let me go ahead and delete that custom preview. Take this whole mapping part, these three components and bring them all the way over here and take these guys and push them all the way somewhere else. Okay, let me show you what I mean. Uh, take the points before they go in the image sampler or actually that's fine if they go here but, but instead of going directly into the center of the box, first let's translate them onto our project. So now I have the points over here. Then now that the points are here, now I draw the boxes on these points. And of course, you can probably imagine what happens is those boxes are gigantic, right? They're huge, so you can't even see the image right now. So let's say um, instead of 17, which is 17 feet right now, this is huge. So I'm gonna change the slider to real number, you know, just go down to, I don't know, 0.27 something. Let's see, uh, that may still be too big. Let's just keep sliding that down until it's a comfortable number. And there we go, that's a lot better, right? So what I'm doing is I'm mapping the points and then creating the box afterwards. So I'm creating the box in my project, okay? Which means I can actually control the units. This is a lot better in my opinion because 
say for example, you were doing perforations or even something three dimensional like this, it's much better to be able to control like what's the largest perforation, what's the smallest perforation, you know, and you can then enter your values based on the actual like real world dimension instead of instead of trying to create the dimension at this scale and hoping that it translates properly. And the good thing about this one as well is that say I scaled the, um, I scaled the rectangle, okay? This dimension still stays the same. The boxes still stay the same. The boxes will not scale with this rectangle. You see, so if I had like a machine a bit set up at a certain radius or something, and I know it can only do this minimum perforation or something like that, uh, I won't have to keep adjusting those values. I just, uh, you know, adjust this rectangle and everything else works automatically. Uh, let's go ahead and color this. So again, custom preview. Let's see, uh, that's the geometry and the color comes from this image sampler. And there we go, right? Awesome, I think that looks pretty good right now. I can even like increase the density a little bit by just reducing this cell size here. Let's try half of that. Yeah, I mean, that's not bad, right? It's all little cubes coming together. And that's basically how you guys should be using the image sampler, okay? Again, just to quickly recap, always draw a big rectangle equal to the pixels off your image and work on it at this scale. And once you're happy and making sure it's working here, then go ahead and just use a simple rectangle mapping or even a box mapping if you wanted to, to go ahead and translate it to your project and then create any other geometry that you need to. Okay, that's uh, my recommendation here. Hope this video helps. If it was helpful, give us a thumbs up. And if you have any requests as well, just put your request in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.